Okay, so today's video is like a little random for my channel, but I have suffered from just severely dry and dehydrated skin this year, and I made my way through testing a bunch of different face bombs to do the slugging method. Um, if you don't know about the slugging method, basically, I will just link some content in the description box below from estheticians and skincare formulators who know a lot more than I do, but my general understanding is that Classically, you would take a petrolatum-based product like Vaseline, just do a tiny little dot and just put it on the areas on your face where you have fine lines or a lot of dryness. And what that does is it seals all of your skincare in and it prevents epidermal water loss. So if you've ever woken up with your skin feeling so dry and papery and the lines on your face look a lot deeper, this video is for you. Ever since I started incorporating face bombs and the slugging method into my routine, it has dramatically changed my skin. So the first product I tried the slugging method with was Aquaphor, this big old tube of Aquaphor. Like I said, classically you would use uh, petrolatum, which is Vaseline, but I didn't have that. I had Aquaphor, which is basically the same thing, but Aquaphor has lanolin in it, and it also has Panthenol and Bisabolol, which are like skin soothers that help calm inflammation, and it has glycerin, which is my skin's favorite hum humectant. Because this just had a little something extra, I decided to just try with Aquaphor instead of buying Vaseline since this tub is so huge. The thing is, I don't like the feeling of basically pure petrolatum on my face. It feels pretty sticky, pretty heavy. And even though you're supposed to use just a very, very tiny amount, like a little like pea-sized dot and that spreads all over your face, I still just don't find that it's the cosmetically elegant experience that I want. But if you are on a budget or you wanna try the slugging method, then I would just go for like the smallest tube of a Vaseline that you could find. Aquaphor is great too. There's also the CeraVe healing ointment. That though kind of stings my face. All CeraVe products, I swear, for some reason sting my face. I can't figure it out. But a lot of people use it with the CeraVe healing ointment. And for a quick background on my skin, I went from basically having oily skin to dry dehydrated skin overnight. Basically, I was living in LA up until 2019 and I had oily skin. Like the kind of oily skin where no amount of blotting or powdering is gonna like keep those oils at bay. Then I turned 30 in February, 2020. And a month later, the pandemic hit and we moved up here, which is in Humboldt County, California, super, super far north in California. First day I woke up, my skin was unlike anything I had ever experienced. It was the oils were gone. They were gone. It was as if I had like been on Accutane again. They were gone. And ever since then, I've had dry and dehydrated skin because I spent like five months living here. Then we moved down to the Bay Area for about a year and a half. Now we're living back here. So what I have heard from some people, from some estheticians, is that LA, super, super dry, as we know, and the Bay Area has a lot of water. And what that can do is when there's moisture in the air, apparently that can suck the moisture out of your face. Don't ask me how, I have no idea, but so many people told me that. So I was like, all right, interesting. There you go. So whether you're struggling from dryness because it's just your skin type or climate or age or whatever, maybe just try giving something like an Aquaphor, Vaseline, or the CeraVe healing ointment a shot. That's your best bet, your cheapest bet. So after I realized that I liked what Aquaphor was doing for my skin, I just didn't like the feeling of it, that's when I fell in love with the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5. This is a healing ointment. It's basically a multi-purpose cream that you can use as kind of a hybrid of a cream and more of like an ointment. And instead of petrolatum being the occlusive ingredient, it's mainly dimethicone. But it also has shea butter, it has metacasicide, and so it has some like skin soothers and some moisturizing ingredients. Um, it basically though, if you haven't tried this, I would be surprised because it's such a cult classic. It looks like a zinc oxide sunscreen. So if you layer it on like a moisturizer, you're gonna look, Jonathan, stop texting me. Before I was so rudely interrupted, if you just slather this all over your face, you're gonna look crazy. It's gonna leave you looking like you just applied a sunscreen with a white cast. Um, so I just use this sparingly. If you go in kind of like thin, small layers, you can put it all over your face. What I like is that not only is it an occlusive, but it also 
It gives me some skin soothing properties, so it really works in my routine when my skin is super inflamed and not just dry and dehydrated, but when I'm having a reaction to a product, this is the one I really go for because it has those extra ingredients that kind of help calm the skin. This is also, I think only $14. The price might change depending on what site you buy it from. But if you just don't think you'll like the feeling of Petrolatum, um, this would definitely be my next recommendation because it is so affordable and so fantastic. I also like to use this one as a spot treatment. So anytime I have a pimple that's just kind of dry and flaky, I'll put this one on top. Sometimes I'll just use this as an eye cream because it is so occlusive. I love it. It's beautiful. It's not the most occlusive out of all of these, meaning like this does a lot. It's a multi-purpose cream that soothes the skin. It's a moisturizer. It's also kind of like a balm. So it does a lot, but some of the other products here I think are better at actually locking in moisture and locking in hydration. This one is just kind of the product that does all of it really well. I know you guys love product fails, so let's talk about one that really did not work out for me. I'm going in no no particular order here. This is the Make Hibernation Capsule Overnight Recovery Balm. I'd seen so many of my friends rave about this and I was so excited to try it. I think the brand Make is just really intriguing to me. I think their textures are a little different. I love their packaging. For example, this is refillable. You just pop this out and if you wanna buy another one, you don't have to pay for the outer packaging. So there's a lot that I like about the brand, but this one in particular didn't work out for me. So it looks like this kind of spongy, dry, I'll try to get a, an image for you. Like you touch it and not a lot, comes out. It's just like a dry, spongy pudding. And so you feel it and you're like, oh wow, this is gonna be so interesting. It's gonna just really seal all that in. It just feels like this matte ointment. It's very difficult to describe. It almost does feel like a spongy cake batter or something. The problem is that not only did this not work for me, this actively dried my skin out. Not just on my face, but I've also used up almost the entire thing on my body. Swear to God, it makes my skin worse. When I posted about this on Instagram, I had so many people saying like, oh my God, thank you, this happened to me too. And I was like, what? And then I was watching a video by Hannah Louise Poston. She had the same experience. She was like, it feels like this actually sucks moisture out of my skin and I felt so validated because so many of my friends love this. I just can't figure it out. I don't know. And it's $38, so definitely not drugstore pricing. It says that it's got L-lysine, L-arginine, oligopeptides obtained by a biotechnological enzymatic synthesis process that targets visible signs of aging. It has synthetic polymers, multifunctional thickening, texturizing, and stabilizing rheology modifiers. Speak to me like a goddamn human. It locks in moisture, acts as a sealant, intensely nourishes and plumps the look of skin, works overnight to reveal a more radiant, well-rested complexion. By the way, I forgot to mention, everything here is fragrance-free. I can't use fragrance in skincare, but thought I'd call that out. Yeah, this is a pass. This didn't do anything for me. It's not nourishing, didn't plump anything, made my skin dry. Mm -mm. Next, we have the Naturium Intense Overnight Sleeping Cream. Someone told me that this was basically just a bomb. So even though this isn't marketed as a bomb, I bought it thinking it might be because we all know marketing is not everything. This is $25. You can get it at Target or Naturium.com. I also know they have an Amazon store. So this one has plant squalane, kakadu plum, plant-based triglycerides, giving you hydrated, brighter, plumper skin when you need it. And it's described as a cushiony balm. There we go. Okay, it was in the marketing, just in the details. This cushiony balm leaves a lightweight, hydrating veil on the skin to provide a continuous moisture supply while you sleep. For me, this is the exact same product as the Make Hibernation Capsule, same texture, same experience. So hopefully you can see here, if I touch it, again, it's that like spongy kind of bomb situation and then nothing kind of picks up on your hand. But for whatever reason, this and the Make that both have that dry spongy texture, actively dried my skin out. I used this one last night because I just bought it and I had a feeling I would want to return it. Um, and yeah, this morning I woke up, my skin felt like paper. It did nothing for me. I think, again, your money is better spent on a Vaseline, Aquaphor, CeraVe healing ointment, 
or the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm. Okay, I have my two favorite products for the slugging method, and then I have the biggest fail of them all. I'm gonna start with my number one pick for a face balm, and I'm shocked by this. It's the new Glossier After Balm, and it is just the most deliciously rich cream. But it's not just a cream. Like, it is thick and balmy. So you put it on the back of your hand or your face, you are left with the most luxurious skin the next morning. This was approved by the National Eczema Association. A lot of times Glossier skincare has um, fragrance and essential oils, which is why I never buy their products. I looked and I saw the National Eczema Association approve this, so I knew it would be safe for me. My God, this is one of the best products I've ever tried in my entire life. The results I saw from this were nearly instantaneous because this is basically like they took a rich moisturizing cream and infused it with like Vaseline. So in my opinion, the product that not only performs beautifully, but also just feels the most comfortable is the Glossier After Balm. I can layer this bad boy up and it'll just feel like a face mask. I can use just a tiny amount or a spot treatment under my eyes and on fine lines. The next morning you wake up and you still feel it on your skin. That's the point of the slugging method is if you still feel that your skin has that bouncy, hydrated, moisturized kind of skincare slip to it and it's not just like dry sandpaper, then you're doing it right. And this is the one I cannot live without all the rest I would happily get rid of except for my next product. This to me is where I personally think you should start if you can afford this. Because at $28, it's only a couple bucks more expensive than the Naturium, which is considered drugstore. And looking at the website, it says, the Glossier After Balm is like a puffer jacket for your skin. It's a moisture barrier recovery cream for very dry and or sensitive skin especially during um, or after exposure to cold weather, harsh sun, mask wearing, acne treatments, over exuberant exfoliation and more. So they call it a cocooning cream that moisturizes for up to 24 hours. I 100% agree with that. Gives you a lasting dewy finish. Yep, it's a little bit of a dewy finish, but it doesn't look greasy. I hate when I, my skin looks wet. It doesn't do that. It says plant-based ingredients work in harmony to help skin bounce back both liter literally and figuratively. It does make my skin feel bouncy. So glycerin is a moisture magnet. Kupuaku butter seals it in. Babasu oil and linoleic acid help reinforce the moisture barrier and postbiotic ferment and green microalgae extract aid in replenishing essential nutrients. It's our thickest, most occlusive moisturizer for daily use on very dry under sensitive skin. It's non-comedogenic so it won't clog pores you can use it in combination with drying acne treatments, yep. And what's also great is once you're done with this, you can clean both the jar and the lid and recycle them separately. Truly, the Glossier After Balm it would be like, if, if my house burned down, God forbid, that would be awful, but if that happened, it would be like one of the first products that I purchase if you have dry skin. I just think that you've gotta try this. Now, if you got a few extra coins to spend, I think that a universally loved product would probably be the Tatcha overnight serum and cream treatment. I had debated this for such a long time. I was just hearing rave reviews about it, but I was like $88 for a cream? I just couldn't imagine spending $88 on like a basic product. Now that I've tried this, I would spend 98, 108, 118 for this. Also, says the person who buys like 30 Fit Glow lip serums, like, come on. But you know what I mean, I just th saw it as like such a basic moisturizer. It's not, it's incredible. While this does not have the texture nor the marketing of a balm, it performs exactly the same way. And it is a serum, a cream, and a balm all at once for me. This is another like, if I had to start over again product, I would immediately purchase. And it's $88, but it does a lot. It has a very multifunctional purpose. The website says it's a cushiony, fragrance-free, soothing serum and moisturizer treatment that visibly calms irritation, strengthens skin's barrier, and balances the microbiome so you can awaken with skin as strong as you are. So the featured ingredients of this is Japanese indigo extract. Indigo soothes irritated skin. It's like a healing aid, blah, blah, blah. Ceramides, palmitic acid, linoleic acid, and phytosterol restore the skin barrier by replenishing lipids to retain hydration, diminishing the, the look of dry, fine lines, and wrinkles. I think it meant to say dry skin. Mondo grass root balances the skin's microbiome. Good bacteria, blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. Non-comedogenic, non-irritating. 
cruelty-free, dermatologist-tested, yeah. This one also doesn't have mineral oil, so if you're avoiding mineral oil, you can go for this one. Honestly, it just does so much. I hope you can see, I am almost out. It's soothing, it's hydrating, it's moisturizing, it's occlusive, it seals everything in. When I wear this as the last step of my skincare routine, I wake up the next morning and I still feel it on my face. That's exactly what the slugging method is for me. The only reason I'm not just using this and the Glossier Balm is because I have so many other fucking moisturizers to use up so I can minimize my collection down to just a few that I really, really love. I have my specific ones for daytime and my specific ones for nighttime. And this for nighttime, I can't live without. My biggest product fail, it's the Allies of Skin Molecular Barrier Recovery Cream Balm. Let me just go on a little rant here. Allies of Skin, Love that they have innovative, multifunctional, powerful formulas. Their prices are fucking crazy for the lack of results that I see from the products. Every product I've ever bought from Allies of Skin has a packaging malfunction. The firming peptide treatment, love that formula, but either the cap just like cracks or the pump stops working. Allies of Skin just like always post on Instagram all these excuses, why they're always out of stock, why their prices are so high, why their packaging breaks. And at a certain point, it's just like, really? But regardless of my disdain for every product I've ever purchased from them completely breaking at some point, this pilled on my face no matter what. I tried using just very small, thin layers on my face, it pilled. I tried really layering it on thick, it pilled. I tried making sure all my skincare underneath was like set and dry, it pilled. I tried seeing if it worked on more wet skin, it pilled. So there's gotta be an ingredient here that just doesn't work with the other products that I'm using. So I think I'm gonna give it one final shot. And tonight I'm gonna use it on dry skin, like fresh out of the shower, this is my only product because I do think Allies of Skin products have so many ingredients in them that something's just bound not to work and like mix well with another product in my routine. Honestly, this will be my last Allies of Skin purchase. Their Mandelic um, pigmentation serum night corrector thing. Everything would get really clogged and it would pill as well. It kind of burned my face. So I'm really over the brand and over my experience given the prices. But for those of you who have never had packaging issues with Allies of Skin and you want to keep trying their products, I'll tell you a little bit about this. If it didn't pill on me, I'm sure I would love it. It's got oat protein and ATP, ceramide, panthenol, squalane, black cumin oil, phytol, and palmid oil tripeptide 8. Um, one thing to note, this smells like oregano to me, like strongly of oregano. Once it's on your face, like, it goes away pretty quickly, but on the initial application, you're like, that's new. I think it's the black cumin oil, if I were to guess. It, it just smells like earthy and spicy. It says it's a multitasker that helps to diminish the signs of fatigue and dullness, reduces appearance of imperfections, gives skin a well-rested glow. I'll pump it out for you and you'll see it is a bomb. It does feel right now, as I'm rubbing it out, it actually feels just like a thin cream. But once it's on your face, it actually does feel kind of like a thick balm. Oh, it just smells like oregano. It's weird. Now that it's kind of starting to set, it feels more kind of like the Glossier, but maybe a little bit thinner. I just think, man, save your money. You worked hard for that money, you know? Because when I think about it, you do so many layers of skincare probably underneath the balm, which is the final step. So it's like, how many of these ingredients in like a packed Allies of Skin formula are really penetrating underneath when you've got like your toner, your hydrating serum, your retinoid or whatever, your moisturizer, you know what I mean? It's like when it's the last layer, are all of those ingredients really penetrating? I'm not sure, I'm, you know, I'm sure a skincare formulator and a chemist could tell me more, but I don't know. I just feel like for a bomb for me, I would actually rather have something that's a bit more simple. Oh, also one night this did sting my face. I think it was when I was wearing an exfoliant. None of the others sting my face ever. This one did a little bit. So allies of skin, I'm done with you. 
These certainly are not all the face bombs out there. So let me know what you've tried that you think I might like. I'm always on the hunt for a nice face balm, although now that I've got the Tatcha and I've got the Glossier, I don't really need anything anymore. But let us know in the comments below so that everybody else can see. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.